Welcome, guys. Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures. Thank you for tuning in. And welcome to the next segment of our MultiCharts.net video tutorial series here at AMP Futures. AMP exclusive platform free of charge. Everything we're showing you today is uh, included at no monthly cost. And we're going to show you now in this segment more about charting. And we're going to show you in this particular video that I'm doing right now how to create a new chart. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing, as you, once you're logged into the platform, you want to go ahead and click File on the top left corner there, and you'll see New. Now you can see the different options. So we're going to go ahead and select Chart Window. So that's what we want to create a new chart. So we want to go to File, New, Chart Window. The first thing you're going to see is Format Instrument. Format Instrument is going to be the dialog box that populates after you go to File, New, Chart Window. And now the next step is identifying an instrument that you want to create a new chart for. All right, so I've already added a bunch of different in instruments and symbols, as you can see in the list. One thing I want to mention to you, if you, don't, if you do not see a symbol that's not listed within this list here, then you're going to have to add the symbol from here. And once you add it, it will be applied in the symbol list here permanently until you delete it within the quote manager, which I'll show later in our videos. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is rather than just jumping right in and adding a contract that I already have listed, I want to show you as if the, there's a contract that we cannot find and we have to add that symbol so we can create a chart for it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure first that the data source that we're connected to is selected. If you hit this drop-down menu, you notice that there's different data feeds. So you have to be very mindful of understanding which data provider you're using since we have multiple options for you. Since in this case I'm using a demo account, I'm using the, the CQG data feed. Okay, so you have Training Technologies, TTNet. You have Rhythmic. LMAX is specific for Forex. So the main three, if you're just trading futures, are TTNet, CQG, and Rhythmic. For now, I'm going to go ahead and select CQG. And the reason why this is important, because when you add the symbol, it's going to try to pull the symbol from that specific data provider. All right, so now I'm going to hit Add Symbol. And then you're going to see Insert Symbols into Portfolio-CQG. Now, this is very important. If you're on the index tab and you're looking for futures contracts, for example, EPM16, that's the June mini S&P contract, I hit look up, no matches found, and that's because the index is specific to stock, stock products. All right, so MultiCharts technically is compatible with, as, as a stock trading platform as well. We're looking specifically for futures instruments. So we're going to left click on the futures tab, and now you're going to be able to type in the symbol. Now, one thing, if you're wondering, why was the mini S&P EPM16? And that is mainly because the CQG symbol map integration with multi-charts, the symbol is a bit different from what we're used to in terms of the traditional exchange symbols. So that might take a little while to get adjusted to. I know it's a little strange to see EP. Uh, that's not normally what the symbol is, which is ES. So what I would recommend, if you're not familiar with the symbols as I am, then you can just type in a, an asterisk symbol just like that. As you can see here, it says type asterisk to show all symbols. And then you can just hit look up, and, if, and watch what will happen when I do that. So you'll see that right now it's currently searching for the entire symbol list within multicharts.net using the CQG data feed. All right, so there's, there's a lot. There's 16,273 contracts total. It wouldn't be very efficient to go through the entire list and try to find your contract. So what I would recommend doing to narrow down that search field, I would allocate and choose the specific exchange that the market that you're looking for trades on. So in this instance, if we're looking for the, the mini S&P, we know that trades on the CME Chicago Mercantile Exchange. All right, so I'm going to go and select CME instead. I'm going to keep that asterisk symbol there. I'm going to hit lookup. And then you'll notice that this is going to be a lot quicker, and, and also the results will be much smaller. So you have 4,873 versus nearly 17,000 results. So now what I can do is I can scroll down the list and I can go ahead and locate the instrument that I'm looking, that trades on, looking for that trades on the CME. Okay, so I'm just going to use my middle mouse scroll to scroll down. You can see there's a lot of currency contracts that, that, are, that are showing right now. There's the mid-cap, there's the nifty, uh, NASDAQ, and there's the mini S&P. So now we've identified the contract, and then once you know the symbol, as you can see, it's EP. Moving forward, this will not be uh, as an, you know, as as much of an extensive process as it already is. All right, so we're going to go and look for June 2016, which is the current front month contract for the June mini S&P. And we're going to hit Add. And now you can see one instrument has been added. Click OK. And now we're going to close. All right, now, typically what happens is when you have an existing chart and you're trying to change the symbol, it'll put the existing symbol here. 
And what happens is, you know, for example, you'll just see that. You won't see the new contract that you just added. All right, so and the customers are wondering, okay, I just added the symbol. Where is the symbol? So what I would recommend doing, just delete the symbol, make it blank, and now you can see that every, it will show all the symbols. Or to make matters even easier, delete the symbol and type in the symbol that you just added. And then what will happen is the auto filter will find it, and you can see now it's been located. So now I can go ahead and left click on that instrument, and I'm going to click OK. And now you can see the chart has been created. All right, so that's the, the best way, in my opinion, to create a new chart within multicharts.net uh, by going to File, New, and Chart Window. And then you got to want to make sure you identify and locate the symbol you're looking to create a chart for within the list. If it's not within the list, you have to add the symbol. Make sure you click on the Features tab. And then once you find the symbol, add it. And then once you add it, it will be permanently stored within the list. All right, so this will wrap up and conclude this particular segment. Uh, this is more just showing you how to create a new chart. We're going to move into the next video, which is going to cover the settings tab, which will go into the different chart types, how to change your resolutions, and I'm going to explain some of the fields uh, that you see here. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.